Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, I want to show you what an audio interface is, what it does, and what features are commonly included in audio interfaces and what to look for if you're looking to compare two different audio interfaces to each other. So first of all, what is an audio interface? An audio interface is responsible for taking an analog audio signal, something that comes from a microphone or an instrument, and it'll convert that to a digital signal so your computer can process it. An example like this would be importing a signal from a microphone, taking it to your computer, and using a piece of software like Ableton, Logic, GarageBand, Cubase, Adobe Edition. There's a whole bunch of different audio software, also known as a digital workstation or a DAW, that can process that sound by compressing it, changing the EQ, adding noise gates, or other effects to that sound. Then, an audio interface can take that digital signal back from the computer and convert it back to an analog signal so you can use something like studio monitors or headphones to monitor the work that you're working on. In front of me today, I have two audio interfaces. I have the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 USB audio interface. This is probably the best-selling audio interface in the world. It's hard to talk about audio interfaces without talking about this unit. And beside it, I have the Presonus 22 VSL. This is another extremely popular audio interface. This is the first audio interface I ever bought, but we'll use these two to compare them to each other to talk about some common features that either come or don't come with an audio interface. So if we put these up beside each other, then we can compare them to each other. So first of all, you can see here that they both have two inputs. That's quite common. A USB audio interface like this will commonly have somewhere between one and eight different inputs. These two both have combi jacks. That means that you can use both XLR or quarter inch cables. I have an XLR cable here. You can just plug that in so you can see. So it will fit in that spot. This is used for things like microphones or DI boxes or line inputs coming from an audio mixer or something like that. You can also use a quarter inch cable. Both of these audio interfaces will take both balanced and unbalanced quarter inch cable. So right here we have an unbalanced cable. It just has the one black ring on the sleeve there. And this one has two. So it has a tip, ring, and sleeve. So the one here, this one's called a balanced cable, also known as a TRS cable. This is just a quarter inch cable, also known as an instrument cable. This is more common for things like uh, plugging into a guitar or something like that, where a balanced cable is more common for plugging into a line output or balanced output on an audio mixer. So speaking of inputs, we'll look at the Scarlett 2i2. So it has two of those inputs, but it also have a, has an instrument level switch. So these inputs will take line level inputs, mic level inputs, or instrument level inputs. On the Presonus, it doesn't take instrument level inputs. It'll just take mic level or line level inputs. So that's one little difference between the two. Also talking about inputs, you need to talk about preamps. Preamps are the secret sauce as to what makes that input sound great. What you're trying to achieve with a preamp is you want something that'll give you a lot of volume, a lot of input volume or gain without a lot of noise. So that's what separates a good preamp from a bad preamp is the amount of associated noise that comes with it. I will say that for the price, the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 does have extremely low noise preamps. There's still some noise when you crank it up all the way, but as you'll see on other reviews around the internet, they are consistently low and it's consistently known as one of the better value preamps that you can buy. While we're talking about inputs, we can look at the back of the two. We see that one of them has mini in and out. So it is possible for a USB audio interface to also handle MIDI inputs and outputs for you when you're interacting with a MIDI device and your computer. So if you want a MIDI device, or if you have a whole bunch of MIDI devices in your studio, that is something to consider that you might wanna have with the audio interface that you choose. 
Another thing that you're going to want is you're going to want that 48 volts of phantom power. This is pretty common across all audio interfaces, but this is what separates an audio interface from something like an XLR to USB cable. These can use that 48 volts of phantom power to power a condenser microphone. Without that phantom power, you cannot power or you cannot switch on or activate a condenser microphone. It is a, there is a notable difference between the two units here. On the Presonus, it's a toggle, which means that if you turn 48 volts of phantom power on, it will stay on no matter how many times you reset the device or unplug and replug it in or turn it on or turn it off, that phantom power will always come back. But on the Focusrite Scarlet, it's a software toggle, so every time that you turn off the device or unplug it and replug it back in, it won't come back by default. And the reason that they do that is that's to protect you against damaging certain microphones. Microphones like ribbon microphones are extremely sensitive to external uh, energy or electricity like that, and you can actually damage the microphone. So to protect you from damaging a microphone without thinking about it, the Focusrite will turn off the phantom power for you every time that you use it. Another thing to look for with the audio interface like this is the monitoring options. On the focus right, you can choose between having both inputs on both ears or you can separate them left and right. On the personas here, we have an option that we can fade between real-time monitoring of the inputs or letting it go to the software and come back with a slight delay, a little bit of latency there. Uh, so that's two different ways that these two devices have handled uh, the direct monitoring. Speaking of monitoring, the Focusrite has this large monitor knob here. Now, this might seem like overkill for somebody that's never used a USB audio interface, but this is pretty important. Oftentimes, you're turning the monitor up and down, up and down, many times, actually, when you're playing back a song. Sometimes you want to turn it down a little bit just so you can sit back and hear like the broad strokes of the mix that you've created. And sometimes you really want to crank it up so you can hear a little nuance or a little effect that you added, and you want to make sure that that detail is in your track. So you actually end up working the monitor knob quite a bit. And on a mixer like the Presonus that has tiny little knobs, that can be kind of annoying, especially me, I have big hands. The little knobs to constantly be turning them up and down is annoying. I much prefer a nice big monitor volume dial like what's on the focus right here. Also on the focus right, you can see that you have independent volume of the headphone jack. You have the same on the Presonus, but the headphone jack on the focus right is on the front. That's a lot more convenient. If you're working in a studio, you can be unplugging your headphones and plugging them into different devices all the time. So it's nice to not have to pull the box out from your desk, then replug it in. The only thing that I like on the back of a uh, audio interface like this is the monitor outputs. So there'll be balanced quarter inch outputs for your desk monitors or studio monitors and your USB cable. In the case of the Presonus, it does make sense to me to have the MIDI on the back, although arguably you do end up patching in uh, new MIDI devices from time to time, but it's not too big of a deal to pull it out of the back. Uh, but the big thing that I really like is having the headphone jack on the front. Another thing to look for with an audio interface is how it's powered. Both of these units are powered by the USB cable that they connect to the computer with, but sometimes it can be helpful to have an external power input on the back of an audio interface. This would be useful if you're doing things like remote recording with an audio interface well connected to an iPad. It's not an issue if you're connected to a laptop because the laptop can power an audio interface over USB, but an iPad cannot. So you need to provide an external power supply. There are a bunch of different workarounds to this, but on some higher end uh, audio interfaces and some lower end ones, you do have the option of an external power supply that doesn't come from the USB cable that's connecting it to a computer. That's one thing to consider when you're looking at differences between audio interfaces. Another thing is to talk about quality. You want something that's 24-bit and 192K. In 2020, that's about the standard of any audio interface now, but it's surprising that the Focusrite can churn that out with the price that it's at. Uh, so that's one thing to consider. You really don't want a lower bit depth than 24 at this point. 
and you don't really want a device that can give you less than 192K. Uh, both of those are way above CD quality, but it's still something that you want to look for and make sure that your uh, device has just to make sure that you're future proofed and you're, you're recording at the highest rate possible that your budget can afford. So there's a quick overview of what a USB audio interface is. Some couple different features to look for, but broadly this thing will sit on your desk all the time and you use it to connect all kinds of audio devices to your computer. It really is the key to making your home studio or pro studio work for you. If you have any questions about what you've seen in this video, please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. And if you want to see any details or pricing or specs of what you've seen in the video, we have some links in the description below. Thank you for watching.